All right, the subject is alternative uh, splicing, something that happens to RNA molecules uh, between uh, transcription and translation. And so uh, to kind of highlight what we're talking about here, we're comparing uh, a little roundworm. There he is right here, uh, Cener uh, habitus elegans, or C. elegans, uh, a little guy. Only uh, it does have quite a few genes, 19,099 genes, but only how many cells? A little minuscule 959 cells. So 19,099 genes, only 959 cells. We can compare that to a human being. I got this off the university website, as you can probably guess, and there front and center is one of my students talking to a young lady. And so, how many genes do these two people have? They each have about how many genes in each cell? 20 to 25,000 genes. Is that a whole lot more than the little roundworm with 19,000? Not a whole lot more. 19,000 genes for the little roundworm, that's 959 cells. 20 to 25,000 genes now for a human being. And how many cells do these human beings have? Ten trillion? Wow, what, a, what an amazing deal. Now we have 19,000 genes, a little over 19,000 genes for a little organisms, organism that's less than 1,000 cells, and 20 to 25,000 genes for an organism, a human being that's 10 trillion cells. What gives? Well, it has to do with the alternative splicing. And uh, what we said before, or earlier, or at least implied, is that one gene codes for one protein. One gene codes for one protein. Well, you could still get that uh, idea from looking at this uh, diagram from your book, because we have here a primary transcript. What is that? That's fresh off the transcription assembly line, an RNA molecule that is a copy of one DNA gene. Primary transcript is the original RNA molecule that is a copy of one DNA gene. But that original RNA molecule actually is composed of both exons and introns. What's the difference? One of those codes for protein, the other does not. Which one's which? Well, the exon contains, uh, uh, um, contains information that is expressed. The introns are just kind of intervening, intervening, intron intervening, uh, exon expressed, intron intervening. So the introns <clears throat> are just uh, kind of spacers. Uh, they are not uh, they are not uh, coding parts of the uh, of the RNA molecule or of the original gene. And so what happens before uh, this actually is a messenger RNA RNA molecule? enzymes cut out the introns and join the exons. And so here we see the introns being cut out and the exons, a uh, little green guy there represents an enzyme, the enzyme molecule. So after the introns are cut out and the exons are spliced together, then what is left is the actual messenger RNA molecule. All right, well, we still have one gene producing one messenger RNA molecule, which codes for one protein. But the solution to the earlier problem, uh, how do we, basically the question is this, how do we human beings get along with so few genes if uh, little uh, C. elegans needs, nearly, needs over 19,000, how, how do we humans get by with only 20 to 25,000 in our 10 trillion cells and we're obviously a whole lot more complex than that little roundworm. Well, the answer now is alternative splicing. We have here the primary transcript. That's the original um, RNA molecule produced by transcription. And it has exons and introns. And of course, the introns are cut out. But what, uh, what do enzymes do with the exons? They combine them in different combinations. Here's exon 1, 2, and 4 combined to form an RNA molecule, a messenger RNA molecule. Here's uh, uh, exons 1, 3, and 5 combined to form a totally different, or a very different, um, messenger RNA molecule. 
and those go out to the cytoplasm when they get by grabbed by a ribosome and translated the result is totally different proteins so from this very same primary transcript off off the very same gene two different proteins result depending on how the exons are combined well uh, uh, genes don't just produce uh, two proteins uh, some of them uh, some genes code for up to a thousand different proteins as the exons are combined in various different orders. Are things complicated down in cell land? Yes, they are. But this, this is the reason that we human beings can get along with so few genes. Only 20 to 25,000. Uh, it's because uh, of all this alternative splicing of the messenger RNA molecule before uh, it's actually a final messenger RNA molecule and goes out to the cytosol. In fact, as your book says, that what percentage of our human genes undergo alternative splicing? 94%. Uh, estimated percentage of C. elegans genes that undergo alternate RNA splicing? Uh, only 10%. So, our 20 to 25,000 genes produce actually how many proteins? over 90,000 proteins due to this alternative uh, RNA splicing. All right, that's it for this one.